What's up, what's up YouTube? It's Wayne with Wayne's Fish Roll coming at you with my 20 gallon long reef build. And it's coming along, it really is. But I'm gonna take you step by step what's going on with the tank. Um, as first thing you can probably see, I mentioned I said I was gonna use two by twos, and well I didn't. I actually used two by fours. Um, I had two by fours laying around because I wasn't using them and they were in the shed and I cut them up and uh, I said why why waste money and go get two by twos when you're not gonna see it when the, when the ply board's over it and uh, it cost me zero amount of dollars so I used two by twos put some plywood around it it worked out great and like in the last video I showed you I had some miscuts and I said hey it works out perfectly for the back and the canopy the canopy's top so I did that and uh, I gotta get some more ply board I gotta get one around here one on this side over here and I've got to uh, there's going to be one that goes here and one that goes here and my doors I'm actually going to have two doors over here I've got to take a drill I got to get my DeWalt drill and uh, drill these in I got these two in by hand with a screwdriver and they, they went in pretty easily um, you can see that and the door is going to be in the middle right here and it's going to open up here and then it's going to open up like that but uh when I was screwing these in with the screwdriver, uh, it actually started taking the skin off my hands. That's how hard I was trying to get it in there. So they're not going in by hand. I've got to get a uh, my DeWalt drill in the shed. So I, I've still got to test this thing and see if it's tempered or not. I really don't think it's tempered. They use tempered in bigger tanks because of the weight of, of the water. And it's such a small tank. I really don't think the bottom's tempered. But we're going to find out, get some 3D glasses, hold up to a computer screen or my cell phone or something, and uh, see if it's tempered or not. Um, down here in the sump, the sump is coming along. I've actually planned out how I'm actually going to uh, actually going to actually going to plan the tank out, the sump out, and. Um, I planned out every little nick and cranny of this thing so basically unlike other sumps I've done in the past and other people do there's only gonna be two walls really there's gonna be one here one here um, there it's basically gonna um, hold the refugium that's pretty much it. it's gonna divide the segments um, I am gonna take a drill and drill holes I don't know how big yet or how many but there's gonna be drill there's gonna be holes drilled into the acrylic panels that way water can pass by but nothing else can um, my micron sock it's gonna probably go on this side, and the, su the pump is gonna be on this side because of the um, our top off system, and it can't work over here because I didn't level it by accident. I, I totally forgot, and uh, so it's n not as high over here, so it only fits on this side. So my pump's gonna be on the other side unless I take PVC piping and uh, start bending it around, which would be complicated. Um, I am gonna put an acrylic panel over the sumps to cut back on evaporation rate. Uh, I am gonna stain the ply board inside. I just haven't got around to it yet, guys. I'm just gonna stain everything once I get done. I'm also gonna put uh, trim work on the stand because I think this just plain out wood looks kinda, kinda dull and boring. So it's gonna, I'm gonna make it look a little better with trim work. Um, that's pretty much what's going on with it, guys. I've still got a lot of stuff to do with it. Um, basically, in this sump, water's gonna, I figured it out, it's just I figured out which side is going to go on. So I'm just going to start from the right. Um, Micron socks going to be contained in one little acrylic panel or box. Water, it's going to have some holes drilled in it so water flows out of here. Inside of the um, Micron sock, I'm going to have some phosphate media and some Kemi Pure Elite so that water hits it and contacts it. Um, then it's going to hit this wall with holes drilled into it. Going to hit the refugium and I'm going to have a deep sand bed about four or five inches in here and that's going to take out my nitrates. I'm going to install the deep sand bed all at once. That way it knocks it out and the, and the cycle will start automatically. Um, this entire part is going to be macroalgae's and I'm actually thinking about switching out this compact bulb and put a 65k LED light bulb at Lowe's in there and uh, then on this side, I'm gonna have my protein skimmer and my return pump. My return pump is actually gonna have a diverter valve, which I can probably put into a calcium or carbon reactor or something, or uh, I'm actually gonna have, well, how it's gonna return, I figured this out pretty much, is in the sumps, I found out your, your surface area on your water, it gets a little stagnant. So what it's gonna do, I don't know how I'm gonna mount it yet, but, uh, the diverter valve, the return from the diverter valve is going to spit water back into the sump. That way it doesn't get a little stagnant on the top and all that stagnant water just goes down to the sump and just it keeps it nice and clean. That way you don't get all this oil build up on the, uh, on the, on the surface of the water in the sump. So uh, I think 
I figured out the drain size I'm going to use. Um, the bigger I go with drain size, it's going to be it's going to be more stressful on the bottom glass. I want to go at least at least one inch. I would like to go two inches. I'm thinking I'm going to go with one and a half inches. I think two inches on the bottom of a glass of a 20 gallon long would just be too big of a hole, and I don't know how the weight would would work on the bottom with a two inch hole in it. So if you've got experience with that in such a small tank, let me know because I've never done that before. Tell you the truth, I've never drilled a tank before. I know how to do it, it's just I've never done it before. So uh, it's come a long ways, guys. Uh, I got a lot of work to do on it. I'm gonna take my time, like I say in every video, get it right. And I've also uh, gonna create the illusion of uh, a bigger tank with small rocks and I've got one more thing to show you. If some of you have seen uh, in the past I made DIY live rock. Now I know how to make it out of cement. I've done it how many years ago? Three or four years ago. Maybe long, maybe five years ago. Four or five, yeah, four or five. And uh, I made it out of Portland cement. Really easy. Only thing I don't like about it is the curing process. Well, three months ago, four months ago, I made a video with uh, how to make live rock out of foam in cryoline spray paint and it worked and uh, cryoline spray paint is aquarium safe um, a lot of people will say well you're only supposed to use a little bit in the tank bottom line is if it's in your tank it's in your tank it doesn't matter how much you put in there it's in your tank and if you've got sensitive corals like SPS's it's gonna affect them so if this little, little amount isn't affecting them the bigger amount won't affect them either and I'm known for experience it, it works it really does um, like that 10 gallon uh, planet tank I had it's in the basement just not set up the back panel it actually has spray paint inside too and it didn't affect the tank at all but I got one more thing to show you with a DI live, live rock I came up with this idea yesterday and uh, I had a little bit of silicone left over from making my 29 gallon sump and I took crush I uh, took crushed oyster shells and I put it on the bottom I pour a bunch of silicone and uh, I sprinkled the crushed oyster shells all around it like so and I pressed down on it and the silicone hardened and it came out like this and what I could do is I could uh, take Crylon spray paint or let, let it naturally age and uh, either grow coralline algae on it or spray paint it like coralline algae and I've taken the I've taken this method I'm gonna combine it with my other method I think this is not a hundred percent positive yet but uh I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the foam and do what I did before and uh, take crushed oyster shells. This is actually for my chickens. They're not getting it now. But uh, take the crushed oyster shells and make a ratio where it's more crushed oyster shells, but the foam holds it together. And this way the crushed oyster shells will sink it and raise the calcium levels and the pH level. Um, but have the crushed oyster shells with the foam and basically taking the best of both worlds and making DI Live Rock. DIY live rock. That's what I got going on guys. Uh, one more quick look. You're not seeing my dirty room. Uh, but one more quick look. That's what I got going on guys. Comment, rate, and subscribe. Later.